Yolmo, Hilmo, or Helambu Sherpa, is a Tibeto-Burman language of the Hilmo people of Nepal. Yolmo is spoken predominantly in the Helambu and Melamchi valleys in northern Nuakot district and northwestern Sindhupalchauk district. Dialects are also spoken by smaller populations in Lamjing district and Ilam district, and also in Ramechap district where it is known as Sayuba. It has a very high level of similarity with Kiering Tibetan, and weaker but still observable similarities to Standard Tibetan and Sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> Language name Yolmo is both the name of the language glottonym, and the ethnic group of people who speak the language ethnonym. Yolmo is also written Hylmo, Yholmo or Yolmo. The H in all of these spellings marks that the word has low tone. Sometimes the language is referred to as Yolmo Tam. Tam is the Yolmo word for language. The language is also referred to as Helambu Sherpa. This usage was common in the 1970s. See, for example, Clark's work from the early 1980s. This name appears to have been an attempt by Yolmo speakers to align themselves with the widely recognized and prosperous Sherpas of the Solu Kumbu district. While there are many cultural affinities between the two groups, the Sherpa language is not mutually intelligible with Yolmo. With a growing recognition of Nepal's ethnic minorities Janajati, Yolmo people have moved away from associating themselves with the Sherpas in recent decades. Language family Yolmo is part of the family of languages called Kiering Kagate. The languages of this family are located along the Himalayan hills and mountains mostly on the Nepal side of the border, although Kiering is in the Tibet Antonymous region. Along with Yolmo, Kiering and Sayuba, other languages in the family include Sum, Nubri and Galsumdo. The language family is better considered be Kiering Yolmo. Yolmo has far more speakers at least 10,000 than Kagate Sayuba 1,500. Yolmo speakers are found in multiple districts, including Melamchi, Lamung and Ilam, while Kagate speakers are based in Ramekhap. Also, Kagate is an exonym, and speakers now prefer the endonym Sayuba, which carries less pejorative stigma than the caste-associated term Kagate papermaker. This is part of a larger cluster of Tibetic languages, which all have their roots in the language that was the basis for Classical Tibetan. History Yolmo speakers traditionally reside in the Helambu and Melamchi Valley regions in the Nuakot and Sindhupalchauk districts of Nepal. Yolmo speakers migrated to the area, across the Himalaya, from the Kiriyong, in what is now southwest Tibet, over 300 years ago. This migration appears to have occurred slowly over multiple generations, rather than one large migration event. Main villages where Yolmo speakers reside include Melamchi Gyong, Tark Gyong, Nakot, Kangyal, Surma Thong, Norbagun, Timbu, and Katumsang. Yolmo speakers are Buddhist of the Nyingma school. Yolmo lamas are called upon to perform religious rituals for the Tamang speaking communities that live in villages below the Yolmo inhabited areas. This has created a strong socio cultural link between the two groups that is reflected in traditional marriage practice where Tamang women marry into Yolmo villages. There is also a tradition of Bon shaman practice in the Yolmo area. This practice appears to be evolving fit with the modern focus on Buddhism among Yolmo people. For example, blood sacrifices are no longer performed as commonly. Traditionally, Yolmo people were yak herders and traders. They currently practice a combination of mixed agriculture involving livestock herding, hotel management, restaurants, and trading. Although outward migrants would often return to village life, speakers of Yolmo are increasing settling in Kathmandu, or moving overseas, which has an effect on transmission of the language as speakers move towards dominant languages of formal education such as Nepal and English. For more on the history of Yolmo speakers, see the Yolmo People page. Dialects <inaudible> 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 There are a number of dialects of Yolmo, spread throughout Nepal, thanks to migration in recent centuries, including in Lamjing and Ilam. There are also closely related languages that should be considered when discussing Yolmo, including Kagate and Langtang. Some of these varieties have been documented in more detail than others. 
Below is a list of established dialects, including what is known about each. Melamchi Valley Yolmo The variety of Yolmo documented by Anna Marie Hari is mostly spoken in the Melamchi Valley area. Hari documented the variety of Yolmo mostly spoken around the villages of Sirmathong and Chimi. Hari also encountered speakers from other areas in the Melamchi and Helambu valleys, and suggested there are two dialects across this area, mostly distinguished by vocabulary. The two dialects are the Western dialect, mostly in Nuakot district and the Eastern dialect, which Hari's work focuses on. While discussing these dialects Hari also observes that the variety spoken around Tarkyong is different again, suggesting there may be more than two dialects spoken in the area. Hari produced a Yolmo Nepali English dictionary of the language with Chegu Lama, and a sketch grammar. Hari's also translated the New Testament of the Bible into Yolmo. Original cassette recordings of her work have been digitized and archived with PARADISEC. Unless otherwise stated, all discussion of the grammar of Yolmo on this page is drawn from the work on Melamchi Valley Yolmo. Topic: <laughs> Langtang. Northwest of the Yolmo speaking areas in the Langtang Valley of the Risua district are three villages that speak a language that is mutually intelligible with Yolmo. This language also shares features with Kiering and is likely part of a dialect continuum between Yolmo and Kiering. Topic: <laughs> Lamjing Yolmo. Lamjing Yolmo is spoken by around 700 people in five villages of the Lamjing district of Nepal. Yolmo speakers have been residing in this area for over a century. Gone has written a sketch grammar and a Lamjing Yolmo Nepali English dictionary. There is also a digital archive of Lamjing Yolmo recordings archived with PARADISEC. Topic: <laughs> ILAM Yolmo. A dialect of Yolmo is reportedly spoken in the ILAM district of Far East Nepal. There is very little documentation of this variety, but it is mutually intelligible with Sayuba. Recordings from the dialect are available as a subset of an online collection of Sayuba materials archived with PARADISEC. Sayuba Although Sayuba has a distinct name, and a separate ISO 639-3 code, linguistically it can be considered a dialect of Yolmo. Sayuba speakers say their families migrated to the area more than a century ago. Hari, who worked on both Yolmo and Sayuba observes that, to quite a large extent they are mutually intelligible dialects. The lexical similarity between Sayuba and Melamchi Valley Yolmo is at least 79%, with the similarity between Sayuba and Lamjing Yolmo even higher 88%. There is a higher level of similarity between Yolmo and Sayuba than there is between either of these languages and Kiering. This all suggests that the separated dialects may have more in common with each other than with the main dialect area. Language vitality The vitality of the language varies depending on the location. In the Melamchi Valley area the language is spoken mostly by older adults. The younger generations having largely shifted to Nepali, though the language is being maintained for religious practices. The shift towards Nepali for younger speakers has also been observed in Lamjing, as this is the language used in schools. The Sayuba variety in Ramekhap is currently still spoken across all generations, including children. There is insufficient data on the ILAM or Langtang variety to assess their vitality at this stage. Orthography <inaudible> 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 Yolmo does not have a written tradition although there are attempts to develop an orthography based on Devanagari, the script used to write the national language Nepali, as seen in the publication of two dictionaries. Sayuba speakers also settled on a Devanagari orthography for their dictionary. All of these dictionaries also present the languages in Roman orthographies. 
Topic Devanagari The modifications to Devanagari are minor, and are intended to ensure that all sounds in the language can be represented. None of the orthographies use the inherent schwa vowel, meaning that a consonant without an overt vowel is not treated as having an implied vowel. Consonants remain the same as in the existing Devanagari tradition, with the use of joined digraphs to represent additional sounds in the language, such as the combination of ka k and ya y for the palatal stop kya c kh, sa s and ya y for the palatal fricative sia, shish, ra and ha for the voiceless liquid ra r, rh, and le and ha for the voiceless lateral la l, lh. Vowel length is unmarked in the Sayuba dictionary. In the two Yolmo dictionaries, the standard Devanagari length distinctions are made, with the addition of a small diacritic below the a vowel a to indicate a longer vowel. The Hari and Lama and Gon dictionaries both use ha h after the vowel to mark low tone, e.g., taha a pheasant, while in the Sayuba orthography a colon represents the low tone. Ta -a pheasant. High tone is left unmarked. Topic. Roman All three dictionaries also make use of variations on a Romanized orthography, although this does not appear to be used or preferred by Yolmo speakers, and is intended for the English literate audience of the dictionaries. Consonants predominantly take their form from the International Phonetic Alphabet, with some exception where there is a more common preference in English, such as digraphs for the palatal stops C Kentucky, CH KHY. G -y and non-superscript for aspiration e -fe -pig. This is represented in the consonant chart in the phonology section. The vowels in Yolmo follow the International Phonetic Alphabet, except for which uses O for ease of typing. Long vowels are represented by double characters, e.g. I acute two is represented as E, except in the Sayuba dictionary where vowel length is not indicated in either the Devanagari or Roman scripts. For tone Hari uses a h after the vowel to represent low tone, e.g. toh stone with high tone unmarked e.g. to rice. Gon uses the International Phonetic Alphabet Convention of using accents over the vowel to mark high and low tone e.g. to rice and to stone, while the Sayuba Dictionary uses a superscript L at the start of the syllable to mark low tone e.g. lto stone with high tone unmarked. On this page the orthography mostly follows Hari's transcription, as outlined in the phonology. Unlike Hari, representation of tone follows the International Phonetic Alphabet, with accents to mark high and low tone e to rice and to stone respectively. This avoids Hari's use of h to represent both low tone and the sound h. Grammatical <laughs> <laughs> overview <laughs> 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 The sections below contain an overview of the key features of the grammar of Yolmo. Information is mostly drawn from Hari's grammar of the language, supplemented by the Yolmo Nepali English dictionary she co wrote with Chegu Lama. Differences between this variety and other documented dialects are indicated where relevant. Links to other related languages will also be made where relevant. All example sentences are presented with an interlinear gloss. This breaks down the words on a morpheme level, giving information about the meaning of each morpheme using a standard set of glossing abbreviations. All examples are cited back to the original publication they are drawn from. Some glossing has been regularized, or added where it was not included in the original. <laughs> Phonology Topic. Consonants There are 36 consonants in Yolmo, which are summarized in the table below. The form is given in IPA and then to the right in brackets is given the form used in this article, if different. Not all consonants are equally frequent. In particular, H, R, and L, are not particularly frequent, nor are vowel initial words. Topic. Vowels There are five places of articulation for vowels. There is a length distinction at each place of articulation. The form of each vowel is given in IPA and then to the right in brackets is given the form used in this article, if different. Below are some minimal pairs that demonstrate the vowel length distinction. 
Vowel length distinctions are not common across Tibetic language, but they are also attested in Sayuba although Sayuba speakers do not consider them salient enough to encode in the orthography and in Kiering for open syllables, unlike many other Tibetic languages, including Kiering, and Standard Tibetan, Yolmo does not have a front-rounded Y. This is true for all dialects of Yolmo documented to date, including Sayuba. Langtang, however, does have this vowel. Tone Like other Tibetic languages, Yolmo has tone, which is located on the first vowel of a word. Hari presents a four-tone contrast of Melamchi Valley Yolmo, high-level, high-falling, low-level and low-falling. Acoustic evidence from Lamjing Yolmo and Kagate indicates that there is only acoustic evidence for a contrast between two tones, low and high. Below are some examples of tone minimal pairs. Low tone words can be marked with breathy voice, but this is not always the case. The practice of indicating low tone with a h following the vowel in some orthographies is related to this breathy property of low tone vowels. The high tone, which uses modal voice, is left unmarked. Tone is predictable in some environments. It is always high following aspirated stops, aspirated affricates and voiceless liquids which speakers treat as equivalent to aspirated. Examples of all of these include Tone is always low following voiced stops, voiced fricatives and voiced affricates. Examples of all of these include The only prefixes in the language are the negator prefixes ma and mi. Both have low tone, however if the following root has high tone it will not change tone because of the preceding low suffix. Syllable <inaudible> <inaudible> structure <inaudible> 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 Yolmo has the syllable structure c, c, v, c. This means that the minimum a syllable needs is a vowel. Syllables can also have up to two consonants before the vowel and one after the vowel. All consonants and vowels can occur word initial, with a restricted set able to occur in the second syllable. The set of syllable initial consonant clusters includes pr, br, kr, py, phi, sw, kw, the, rw. All vowels can occur syllable final, and final consonants include voiceless unaspirated bilabial, b, and velar stops, k, voiced liquids, l, r, the voiced labia velar, with and all nasals except the palatal per meter, n, ing. Morphophonemic processes There is a regular process by which the suffixes undergo a change depending on the nature of the verb that they are attached to. Suffixes that begin with a voiceless stop, such as the non-past k, the imperative to or the hortative ka, all undergo regular morphophonological processes. If they occur after a syllable with a final sound that is voiced they will also be voiced, if they occur after an unvoiced final sound, or an r, the start of the suffix will be unvoiced. The examples below are with the non-past k. The only forms that cannot be predicted by this process is if the suffix is after i, or e, both of which are high front vowels. The voicing cannot be predicted in this context, and the suffix is sometimes voiced and sometimes unvoiced. Below are examples of verbs with both i, and e. There is also a tendency for suffixes that begin with k, g to omit the initial sound after a vowel. This is not as regular a process as the voicing alterations described above. Below are some examples of this process. Topic: <inaudible> Word order. Yolmo has the basic word order of subject-object-verb. This is common in the Tibeto-Burman family. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Nouns, nominals. The noun phrase in Yolmo includes either a noun or a pronoun. The noun phrase with a noun can also include a determiner, adjective and number marker, while the options are more limited with a pronoun or proper noun. Noun suffixes include case markers, plural marker and numeral classifiers. The order of the noun phrase is determiner noun equals plural focus marker equals case numeral classifier number adjective. Topic. Determiners 
The Yolmo definite determiner is d the same as the third person inanimate pronoun it this. It occurs before the noun. The indefinite is marked using the numeral t one, which comes after the noun, like other numbers. Topic: <laughs> Pronouns. Yolmo pronouns are presented in the table below. There is an inclusive, exclusive distinction for first-person plural pronouns, a gender distinction for third-person singular and an animacy distinction for third-person. The first-person plural aura is more commonly found in the western dialects of Melamchi and Helambu Valley Yolmo, as well as Lamjing Yolmo, while U is more common in the eastern dialects. It is possible to create a dual form by adding E to the plural form e.g. Kaya E U2, although this is optional. The third person plural ku can also be used as a polite form for a single third person. Pronouns do not take determiners, number, or adjectives. Topic: <laughs> Interrogative pronouns. Interrogative pronouns are used to form questions. Yolmo has the following attested interrogative pronouns. Hari gives both ka and kala ka with the dative suffix as forms for where in Melamchi Valley Yolmo, but only kala is attested in Lamjing Yolmo. There are also a number of forms for why, type and tile are attested in both Melamchi Valley Yolmo and Lamjing Yolmo, but only time in Melamchi Valley Yolmo. This is because it uses the verb may say as part of the construction, which is not in Lamjing Yolmo see the section on reported speech, as well as the word list. The kanmu form of how is attested in Lamjing Yolmo, while kanu is used in Melamchi Valley Yolmo, with an optional mu suffix to make kanu mu. Hari and Lama also note the form kanu bar in the western regions. Note that the words suji and sula are complex forms, suji is su who with the genitive case suffix, and sula is su with the dative case suffix. For more on the structure of interrogative clauses, see the section on question formation. Topic. Proper nouns Proper nouns include people's names, place names and the names of deities. They do not take determiners, number, or adjectives. Topic. Plural The plural marker in Melamchi and Lamjing Yolmo is equals ya. The plural is treated as a clitic as it occurs after an adjective if there is one, rather than always attaching directly to the noun. Plural marking is optional if an overt number is used with the noun, or if the number is clear from context. The plural form in Sayuba is equals kya, which is more similar to the kiaring form, suggesting the Yolmo equals ya as an innovation. Topic. Focus marker Yolmo has a nominal focus marker T. The focus marker gives prominence to the noun it is attached to. In the example below, the older brother is singled out, contrasted with other relatives who perhaps did not obtain such wealth. Hari also notes for Melamchi Valley Yolmo that there is a focus marker Ka, which is used specifically to mark something as contrary to expectation. Nouns can also take the emphatic suffixes ni and ra, which are also used for other parts of speech see section on lexical emphasis. Topic. Case marking Yolmo uses post-positional suffixes to mark the case of nouns. Similar to other Tibetic languages, Yolmo uses a single case form for multiple functions. Case marking is treated as a clitic, as clitics come at the end of the whole noun phrase, rather than directly attaching to only the noun. Below the cases are listed with their functions. The case markers are phonologically bound, with the equals key form becoming voiced in some environments, it is also reduced to equals i in some environments. See the section on morphophonemic processes for more on this. Where there is also a plural the case marker comes after the plural, as in the example below. Topic. Ergative case Yolmo has optional ergative case marking. Ergative marking means that subjects of intransitive verbs are unmarked, the same as objects of transitive verbs. 
Subjects of transitive verbs are distinguished shed from both of these with the equals key marker in contrast to nominative accusative languages like English, where the subjects of both intransitive and transitive verbs are marked in contrast with objects of transitive verbs. Below is an intransitive sentence, with the subject a taking no marking. In contrast with this ergative marked transitive, where the subject a is marked with the ergative. Speakers do not always use the ergative case, which is why it is considered optional. Ergative marking is more common for past tense, and non-habitual actions. There also appears to be some effect of animacy, and the ergative appears to be used as a strategy in discourse to mark agentivity. This form of optional ergativity is common across the Tibeto-Burman family. Topic. Dative case Dative case is typically used to indicate, broadly, the noun to which something is given. The Yolmo dative has this function, but it also has a function in dative subject constructions. The dative subject occurs with a small set of intransitive verbs, and denote personal, and usually internal, states. The use of dative subjects is common in languages of this area, and is also attested more broadly. Number As can be seen in the examples above, cardinal numbers can be used in noun phrases. A list of numbers in Yolmo is given in the section on numbers below. Numeral classifiers Yolmo also has an optional numeral classifier thal. This is used to emphasize number. In the example in the section on case marking above, the speaker is emphasizing that the hens laid a large number of eggs. Lamjing Yolmo also has the classifier menda which can only be used with humans. Adjectives Adjectives occur within the noun phrase. Adjectives usually come after the noun so small child would be pia thame lit child small. Adjectives can also occur before the noun, especially in casual speech. Verbs There are three main types of verbs in Yolmo, lexical verbs, auxiliary verbs and copula verbs. The lexical verbs inflect for tense, aspect, mood and evidence and can take negation. The infinitive form of verbs takes the suffix te. The infinitive is used in a number of constructions, including the habitual and complementation. Topic: <inaudible> Copula verbs. The copula verbs and their functions are given in the table below. Copulas are not inflected for person, number, or politeness level, and many do not distinguish tense. Equation copulas are used to link two noun phrases, while existential copulas are used for functions of existence, location, attribution and possession. Hari describes the forms that end in pa voiced in this environment so they become ba as more emphatic, unlike lexical verbs with a pa suffix they do not indicate past tense, and are not used exclusively in question structures. Some copula verbs can also be used as verbal auxiliaries, particularly in constructions marked for aspect, where they contribute evidential, tense or epistemic information. The negative forms of each copula are given in the section on negation. Below the different evidential and epistemic functions of each copula type are discussed. Egophoric The egophoric, or personal, is used to indicate that the speaker has personal knowledge about the information. In the example below, the speaker would not be reading the name of the book, but already know the name as they show it to someone else. Unlike in standard Tibetan, the speaker does not need to be personally close to an individual to use the egophoric while talking about them. Different varieties of Yolmo prefer different forms of the egophoric as the default, in Helambu they prefer yin, in Lamjing Yimba and Ilam Yij, Yekin is past tense forms of the existential yeke in Lamjing, with the form Yeba also often used in past tense structures, as well as questions. The past form cannot be further decomposed, as the form can, k is the non-past tense suffix for lexical verbs. 
There are some structures where the egophoric is used as the default, such as conditionals. <laughs> Dubitative Unlike the other copulas, which mark evidential distinctions, the dubitative copulas are epistemic forms used for reduced certainty. They are related to the o dubitative suffixes for lexical verbs. In the example below, the speaker does not have any direct evidence that Rigen is in the house, but thinks that is where he might be. Topic: <laughs> Perceptual. The perceptual, or sensory, evidential is used to mark information acquired through direct sensory evidence, either through sight, one of the other senses, or internal state such as feeling an ache. Hari calls the perceptual forms mirative, as indicating knowledge through sense often occurs for information recently acquired. Only the duba form, with the emphatic suffix pa, appears to indicate some amount of surprise or counter-expectation. Topic. General fact The general fact form is used for uncontroversial and universally known facts. This verb is used in functions of existence, location, attribution and possession, and is not used in equational structures. The form is ogen in melamchi valley yolmo and oge in lamjing yolmo, demonstrating a link with the non-past tense suffix. The verb itself is from the lexical verb o, come. It cannot be used for facts about the past. This copula is not attested in standard Tibetan or any other Tibetic language outside of Yolmo. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lexical verb stems. The Melamchi Valley variety of Yolmo exhibit verb stem alterations in the context of some verb structures. Verb stems with short front vowels have their vowels lengthened e.g., i, e, short back vowels are fronted and lengthened e.g., o, and, a, e, u, i. These changes occur mostly with perfective structures and imperatives. Below are some examples of this alternation using the verb ma say. When these structures are negated, the negative prefix is lengthened rather than the verb stem, which maintains the vowel change this does not occur in the imperative. These alterations do not occur in Lamjing Yolmo or Sayuba. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Auxiliary verbs. There is a small set of auxiliary verbs in Yolmo. The auxiliary te is the same as the lexical verb te, sit, and is used to add imperfective aspect. A subset of the copulas can also be used as verbal auxiliaries: yin, yi, yekin, and du. These contribute evidential information and for ye, ye can also some tense information. As you can see in the example above the do copula is being used as an auxiliary, so they can co-occur with the other auxiliaries. Tense Yolmo has a major tense distinction between past and non-past. These are marked with suffixes on the lexical verb, sin is the past tense marker and k or ken is the non-past marker. <laughs> past tense The past tense form is sin. The past tense form sin can also occur with the perceptual evidential do in an auxiliary position. This is not possible with the non-past tense suffix, nor can any other copula be used as an auxiliary with the past tense suffix. Hari suggests this structure is inferential, in that the speaker did not have to witness the event. Gon describes it as narrative past. Melamchi Valley Yolmo also has a past tense form kyo that Hari refers to as the main point past, telling past. This form is not found in Lamjing Yolmo. There is also the form pa, which Hari says is always used in question structures. In Lamjing Yolmo there are some examples where it is used in declaratives rather than questions, with a past tense meaning. Non-past tense The non-past tense is used for both present and future constructions. Hari gives the forms K and Ken for Melamchi Valley Yolmo, but only K is attested in Lamjing Yolmo. Hari refers to this form as the intentional present, but it can also be used in future constructions. 
Topic: Aspect. There are a number of verb suffixes that are used to mark aspect. These broadly fall into categories of imperfective and perfective, as well as habitual. When an aspect form is used, a copula verb is also used. Topic: <laughs> Imperfective. The imperfective is used for events that are ongoing or not complete. The ku suffix is attested in both Melamchi Valley and Lamjing Yolmo. It can only be used with the do copula verb. The imperfective form tera can be used with either the do or ye copula verb. In Lumjing Yolmo some speakers pronounce it as tira. Hari refers to the tera construction as the perfect continuous aspect, because it can be used to refer to something that was ongoing until a particular point, as per this first example. Gon describes it as an imperfective, as it does not appear to have this perfect aspect function in Lamjing Yolmo, as per this example. The auxiliary verb te can also be used to mark an imperfective construction. Neither ku nor tera are used if the negative prefix is on the main verb. The auxiliary verb can be used in negative constructions, and takes the negative prefix, rather than the main verb. In the example below, the tera imperfective is used as the negative prefix is on the auxiliary. Topic. Perfective The perfective aspect suffix is used for events that can be described as whole, without reference to the duration like the imperfective. The perfective form in Yolmo is T. Multiple verbs with perfective aspect can be used together to create a clause chaining structure. It is distinct from the nominal focus suffix T. Topic. Habitual Habitual aspect marks that an event is usual, customary or frequent. There is no specific habitual aspect suffix for yolmo. Speakers will either use a verb with an infinitive, or with no suffix. <laughs> <laughs> Mood Mood is marked in yolmo with a set of verb suffixes. The main mood suffixes are given in the table below. Topic. Imperative The polite imperative suffix is to voiced as do after voiced codas and some vowels. An overt subject is not used, and the same imperative form is used regardless of person or number. The less polite form of the imperative consists of an unmarked verb stem. There are also a small number of irregular imperatives that are formed without the imperative suffix, particularly so eat, from saw eat. If there is an honorific form of the verb it can be used, unmarked, as the most polite form of the imperative. The negative form of the imperative the prohibitive uses the ma form of the negator prefix with the verb stem. The imperative suffix is not included. Topic. Hortative Gone notes two verbal suffix forms for the hortative in Lamjing Yolmo, a ka and a tu. The ka form is used with all persons except first person singular. The suffix remains in negated horatitvis. The two form is used with first person singular, as well as with other persons. It also remains in negative constructions. Two appears to be less strong, and tends to be used more frequently. Hari gives the form as two, she also calls it an optative, but it appears to be a hortative. Topic optative Hari does not list an optative suffix. Gon gives the optative I in Lamjing Yolmo. Hari and Lama 2004 list I as a verb that expresses a strong wish, clearly linking to the Lamjing Yolmo optative form. <laughs> Dubitative Hari describes the dubitative as probable future, indicating the sense of decreased certainty that the dubitative mood marks. The forms O, O and RO are found in Melamchi Valley Yolmo as part of the morphophonemic voicing process, but the RO form is not found in Lamjing Yolmo. This verb suffix is related to the dubitative form of the copula. Topic. Negation Negation is marked on lexical verbs by prefix. 
There are two prefix forms, mi is for negation in non-past tense present and future, while ma is used for past tense, as well as negation of imperatives ma tap, don't fall. The negated forms of copulas are slightly irregular. They are listed in the table below in brackets underneath the regular forms. Topic. Clause structure This section outlines some of the main features of the structure of clauses in Yolmo. Topic. Nominalization Nominalization is the process by which words undergo a change that allows them to act as nouns. While nominalization is common process, it is particularly pervasive in Bodic languages, where it can be used for a variety of functions, including the formation of complement clauses and relative clauses. The common Bodic nominalizer pa productively functions in yolmo as a suffix that can mark past tense, question structures or emphasis. There are other nominalizing forms in yolmo. Hari describes a number of nominalizers in Melamchi Valley yolmo. The first is the nominalizing suffix ka. A number of other nominalizing suffixes that attach to verbs have more specific functions. In Lamjing Yolmo the most productive nominalizer is candy. None of the others described above have been attested. This form is not attested in Hari's description of Melamchi Valley Yolmo, but is probably related to the ka form described above. There is also a locative nominalizer sa, which creates a noun that denotes location. Topic. Adverbials An adverbial structure modifies the verb in some way. Topic. Temporal adverbial subordination Temporal adverbs can create subordinated clauses. Below is the list of temporal adverbs observed in Yolmo to date, some are independent words, and others are verbal suffixes. Topic. Manner adverbs Manner adverbs create a subordinated clause that expresses the manner of an action. The manner adverb is limu, limu in Lamjing. The forms tile and denmu are also found in Lamjing Yolmo, but not yet attested in other varieties. Topic. Conditional Conditional constructions are formed through the use of the suffix na on the verb in the protasis clause the if clause. Speakers will either use the na suffix directly on the verb, or leave the verb unmarked at attach the na suffix to the verb meaning say may in melamchi valley yolmo, lap in lamjing yolmo. Complementation <laughs> <laughs> A complement clause is a clause that functions as an argument of another clause. In Yolmo the embedded complement clause takes the infinitive suffix te. The optative mood suffix i in Yolmo can also be said to be acting as a complementizer. Relativization A relative clause is dependent on a main clause. Different relativizing strategies are used in the two described varieties of Yolmo. In Melamchi Valley Yolmo the non-past tense form ken gi is used for non-past constructions, and the past tense form kyo gi is used for past tense constructions for each the gi is optional. Similarly, in Lamjing Yolmo, k ki can be used for non-past relativized clauses and pa ki for past relativized clauses. This difference reflects the fact that the past tense form kyo is not found in Lamjing Yolmo. In Lamjing Yolmo, the nominalizer candy can be used to make a relative clause. Topic. Clause chaining The perfective suffix t is used to chain clauses together. Multiple verbs with this suffix can be stacked to create a complex series of events. Topic. Question formation Word order does not change to form questions in Yolmo. Rising intonation at the end of the utterance can indicate it is a question. 
A set of interrogative pronouns are used for open content questions. The pa suffix, which was introduced in the section on past tense is used in question structures. The reply would be with the regular past tense, and not the pa suffix. The copula form used in a question matches the form the question asked anticipates the question answerer will use in their answer. That is, if they anticipate the answer will use the perceptual evidential do, this is the form they will use in asking the question. Topic. Reported speech Yolmo has two strategies for reporting speech, the first is using the lexical verb ma or lap say, the second is using the clause final evidential particle lo. Topic. Lexical verb In Melamchi Valley Yolmo the main lexical verb of saying is ma, in Lamjing Yolmo it is lap. Hari and Lama note that lap is found in Melamchi Valley Yolmo, but in restricted use. If the speaker, and the person the speech is directed at are overtly marked, these usually precede the reported content although they are frequently not overt in natural speech. The say verb prototypically occurs after the reported content, although if the reported content is quite long the verb may occasionally come before it. The lexical verb say is also used in a number of other constructions, including conditionals. Topic. Reported speech evidential The reported speech particle also indicates that the speaker is reporting a prior utterance, but has a different focus. The reported speech particle does not account for who the speaker way, but instead primarily serves to focus on the fact the information is reported, and not directly witnessed by the speaker. In the example below from Sayuba, it is not made explicit if the report comes from Myla, or another person. The reported speech evidential occurs frequently in narratives. This is part of the wider evidential system of Yolmo, which is also found in the copula verbs above. Topic lexical emphasis There are two emphatic suffixes that can be used with a number of word classes. This is in contrast to the emphatic form t, which is only used with nouns. The first is ni, and the second is ra, which Hari and Lama note as a frequently used emphatic marker in informal speech. The distinction between all of these forms is unclear, although Hari refers to the ni form as used for moderate focus, so it is perhaps less emphatic for nouns than the t suffix. Topic: <laughs> Clause final particles. Yolmo has a series of sentence final particles that can be used to achieve a range of effects. The table below gives some of the particles in Yolmo and a brief description of their function. The reported speech marker lo is an evidential form, as it indicates the source of the information as someone else. This structure is described in the section on reported speech. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Honorifics. Yolmo has a subset of honorific vocabulary which is used when talking to, or about, people of higher social status, particularly Buddhist lamas. Honorific lexicon includes nouns, verbs and adjectives. The table below gives some examples, including the regular word, the honorific form, and the English translation. The use of honorifics in Sayuba and Lamjing Yolmo is not as common, although some speakers still recognize and use these forms. Topic: 100-word Swadesh list. Below is a 100-word Swadesh list in Yolmo. The Yolmo forms are taken from Hari and Lama, who note some variation between the eastern e and western w varieties in the Melamchi and Helambu Valley area. Where the form is different in other varieties, this is indicated in the right-hand column of the table. This variation shows that the Lamjing variety and Sayuba have more in common with each other lexically than they do with the Melamchi Valley variety. Topic: <laughs> Numbers. Yolmo has a base 20 counting system. The Yolmo number system is very similar to that of standard Tibetan and other Tibetan varieties. 
In the table below is the Yolmo number, taken from Hari's dictionary. In Lamjing Yolmo, the base 20 system is only used by a small number of older speakers, with others using a base 10 system. For example, 20 is Idu, 30 is Sumdu, 40 is Iptu, etc. Even then, once people reach 20 they usually switch to counting in Nepali. Ordinal numbers are formed by addition of the suffix pa, or alternatively with the suffix pu for ordinals relating to people, in Melamchi Yolmo. Ordinals are typically only formed up to 20. See also Kiering Kagate languages Kiering language Kagate language Tibetic languages External resources Open access digital collection of Anna Marie Hari's cassette recordings of Melamchi Valley Yolmo from the 1970s and 1980s at PARADISEC. Digital collection of Lauren Gones documentation of Lamjing Yolmo 2009 at PARADISEC partly open access. Three open access collections of Sayuba, a dialect closely related to Yolmo, MH1 digitized from 1970s recordings, SUY1 documentation by Lauren Gohn MTC1 a 2013 bold documentation by the Mother Tongue Center Nepal. Topic key references Clark, Graham E. 1980. A Helambu History. Journal of the Nepal Research Center, 4-1-38. Clark, Graham E. 1980. Lama and Tamung in Yolmo, Tibetan Studies in Honor of Hugh Richardson. M. Aris and A. S. S. Key e. D. S. Warminster, Aris and Phillips, 79-86. Gone, Lauren Lamjing Yolmo Nepali English Dictionary. Melbourne, Custom Book Centre, The University of Melbourne. Gone, Lauren A Sketch Grammar of Lamjing Yolmo. Canberra, Asia Pacific Linguistics. Hari, Anna Maria and Chegu Lama 2004. Dictionary Yolmo Nepali English. Kathmandu, Central Department of Linguistics, Tribhuvan University. Hari, Anna Maria 2010. Yolmo Sketch Grammar. Kathmandu, Ekta Books. Hedlin, Matthew 2011. An Investigation of the Relationship Between the Kiering, Yolmo, and Standard Spoken Tibetan Speech Varieties. Master's Thesis, Payap University, Chiang Mai.